Good morning. My name is Austin Rubik. I'm the field technician here. My name is Luke King. I'm a lands technician at Catfish. Uh, so I went to school for environmental technology at Fleming. It was a three-year program. Um, through that, I got a lot of education in uh, primarily water quality and water quantity. And here at Catfish Creek, uh, I use that when we, we do uh, PWQMN and PGMN. I also run the uh, Benthix uh, program here at Catfish Creek. Uh, through my schooling, I got my OBBN cert certification. And uh, yeah, and I've just been loving it since. I also went to Fleming College. Uh, I actually took the Fish and Wildlife program and I'd highly recommend it. It teaches you all kinds of uh, species ID skills and plants, benthics and wildlife, birds, um, <clears throat> as well as providing you with the practical skills you need to, uh, to learn how to come out and do things like this, such as collection of benthics. Um, I really like my program and if you're looking to get into wildlife studies, it's a great way to, uh, to get in involved. Uh, we're going to give you a brief overview of, the, of our aquatics program and what we do with that information here and how we go about collecting it. And uh, we're going to try to give a few examples of um, what we're doing, uh, what our part is in um, the fight against climate change. Global climate change is now recognized as a major threat to both our species and to our sensitive habitats. Some of these systems, such as wetland systems, are at increased risks due to their complexity biodiversity, and interconnectivity to human land usage. Wetland systems comprise up to 4-6% to of the global land mass. Some popular Canadian wetland examples that you might recognize are swamps, fens, marshes, and bogs. Additional wetland features also include salt plains, flood plains, seagrasses, mangrove forests, uh, arctic plains, and peatlands. These are all diverse habitats with different stressors affecting each one uniquely, so management strategies will have to be adaptable and flexible to address the problems that affect each wetland. It is conclusive that the alteration of hydrological regimes has a lasting effect on the environment. These alterations occur with great variability and therefore make managing wetlands very challenging. It is imperative to recognize the potential magnitude of negative effects caused by climate change in order to better mitigate its effect on human lives. The body of literature on the ecological and hydrological effects of climate change has grown considerably over the past decade. There is undisputed agreement among Canadian climate models that atmospheric temperatures will rise in the future and that precipitation may rise or fall depending on the place. Considering that the main climatic driver of the development of wetlands is precipitation and temperature, we can assume that there will be adverse and diverse effects on our wetland systems. Smaller wetlands might dry up and disappear entirely, including the wetlands in the prairies in the southern part of the boreal forest. Climate change can be expected to act with a variety of other factors, many of which, depending on the region, can cause significant stresses to wildlife and habitat in wetland systems. Other examples of impacts anticipated from ex extreme climate changes include Changes in base flows, altered hydrology in both depth and hydro period, increased heat stress in wildlife, extended range and activity of some pests and diseases, including problematic exotic species, increased flooding, landslide, avalanche, and mudslide damage, increased soil erosion, increased flood runoff resulting in a decrease in recharge of floodplain aquifers, decreased water quantity and quality, increased risk of forest fires, increased coastal erosion and damage to coastal buildings and infrastructure, increased tropical cyclone activity, increased damage to sensitive coastal ecosystems such as coral reefs. Climate change may have its most pronounced effect on wetlands through the alteration of hydrological regimes. However, other variables related to climate may have specific impact in regional or local areas. These impacts include increased temperature and evapotranspiration, altered biochemistry, oxidization of organic sediments, fire, physical effects of wave energy, and even an altered biochemistry. In order to address the concerns surrounding climate change in our wetland systems, scientists are providing insightful recommendations to our policymakers and practitioners. These recommendations act to motivate discussion, direction, and ultimately development of a global wetland conservation system. Monitoring is an essential element of ecosystem management as it is intended to detect long-term change in an ecosystem. An integral part of monitoring is looking for what we call indicator species. An indicator species is an organism whose presence, abundance, or absence 
can demonstrate the conditions in a habitat. A common indicator that we use here in Ontario are benthic macroinvertebrates, also known as benthos. These are small animals that live in the logs, leaf litter, and stones of river systems and lake systems. The term macroinvertebrate can be broken down into macro, meaning visible by the naked eye, and invertebrate, meaning it simply lacks a backbone. As mentioned before, benthos can live in a wide variety of habitats, from the smallest headwater stream to the largest river bodies in Ontario. Insects comprise of the largest diversity of these organisms, including stoneflies, mayflies, caddisflies, craneflies, and midges. Benthic macroinvertebrates are extremely important in aquatic food webs. In most water systems, the energy stored in plants is available for consumption to these benthos uh, in the forms of leaves or sometimes algae. In most streams, the energy stored in plant matter is available to benthic invertebrates uh, through the consumption of plants or algae. The energy derived from eating these plants and algae is then transferred up the food chain uh, into animals such as fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and even fishermen. Me and Luke are going to talk about the four types of wetlands within Ontario. The first wetland I'm going to talk about is a marsh, um, which is characterized by poorly drained mineral soils and by plant life dominated by grasses. Uh, marshes are common at the mouths of rivers. The marsh plants slow down the flow of water and allow for the nutrient enriched sediments to be deposited, thus providing conditions for further de development of marsh. Marsh wetlands are very important for water quality and they're also huge catchment areas um, in the event of a flood. So next I'm going to tell you a little bit about a swamp. Uh, swamps are a wetland characterized by mineral soils with poor drainage and plant life dominated by trees. Uh, swamps are found throughout the world, uh, most often in low-lying regions with poor drainage next to rivers uh, which supply the, the swamp with water. Some swamps develop from marshes that slowly fill in over time, allowing trees and woody shrubs to grow. Uh, to be ca characterized accurately as a swamp, there needs to be at least a 25% tree cover. The other two types of wetlands are bogs and fens, and they're actually quite similar from an external perspective. These two types of wetlands are most commonly dominated by peatlands, and they're often known as peatlands. The primary difference, however, between a bog and a fen is going to come from its water source. In a bog, although we have the same sphagnum moss that will be found in a fen, the water is actually very acidic from the mineral soils that are held underneath. Bogs are also fed through rainfall and other small water sources that trickle in and are basically the, the water is captured by the peat vegetation as well as the hydrophobic soils. Fens, contrarily, are fed by surface and groundwater sources uh, and therefore they're the water within is typically found to be more alkaline where rather than just dominated by sphagnum moss we see grasses, sedges and reeds emerging from our fence. <laughs>